probably the most appealing part for me was answering these long-standing questions that I've had since I was a kid. Evolutionary biology helps us understand the nature around us. First and foremost, I'm interested in evolutionary questions. I'm very interested in the biodiversity that we see on Earth. Everything from species identification to deep evolutionary questions can be addressed with DNA. And the CCG provides all the resources necessary. So if someone's out collecting birds or reptiles or whatever, they bring it to the lab and they extract the DNA. So they purify the DNA and separate all the cell material from the DNA. And then you have pure DNA. Once you have pure DNA, you can do all kinds of things with it. You can sequence that gene from many different organisms and then compare them to each other and build an evolutionary history or a family tree for genes and species. The main platform for sequencing for the past 30 years is Sanger sequencing. With that method, we look at one section of the genome at a time. With next-gen sequencing method, the data we can get is massively increased because we can do a lot of these sequencing in parallel. We have the MySeq sequencing machine here and we can produce 25 million sequences in one read. More recently, there's a third generation sequencing. Here we have an Oxford Nanopore min-ion machine. So by reading those electrical signals, we're able to read the DNA. It fits in my pocket, it's amazing. <laughs> Matt Van Dam is currently working on weevils using this new technology to try to understand the evolutionary history of the weevils. Weevils are a particular family of beetles. One of the problems in the genome assembly is that you have all these little bits of information and then sometimes sticking them together in the right way is extremely complicated. The nanopore does quite well for these longer reads. A group of us here at the Academy are sequencing the complete genome of the pygmy angelfish. And that includes all of the chromosomes, all of the mitochondria, and everything. It's very exciting work. Lauren is trying to look at which genes are active or turned on and what kind of combinations can be produced by these different genes being turned on and off. One of the craziest things is we have only characterized like 1% of scorpion venoms. A single individual scorpion might have 150 unique types of venom in its venom gland. And so it has genes to create all of these different venoms. And those venoms are highly specific. There's active research on using scorpion venom to treat cancer, to treat arthritis, to treat multiple sclerosis. So she is using something called RNA-seq or transcriptomics. And what you do is you sequence all of the proteins and so this is a way to sort of skip the whole genome sequencing and you can focus just on the RNA, which is what produces the proteins. The Seahorse Project is something I've been involved with for many years. We've been trying to understand this very complex group. They apparently evolved very rapidly and created many different forms. So we have seahorses, pipefish, sea dragons, all these wild looking fish and nobody really knows the relationships because they evolved and radiated very rapidly in a very short period of time. We're using a new technology called ultra conserved elements. And these are parts of the genome that are unchanged across hundreds of millions of years to reconstruct those branches. Our exhibits have lots of amphibians, so when we bring them in, we have to make sure that we don't spread chytrid fungus to the rest of our amphibians. If we put it in with the rest of the exhibits, they would probably all die. And we essentially create these probes, which are pieces of DNA that match those unique markers to the chytrid fungus. Probe matches, we know it has this fungus. If there is no match, we can be pretty sure that there are no fungus infections. I think the role of the CCG is to help every scientist answer their questions, and there are very few questions you can address without genetic data. We have all this information that's accumulated through for decades by scientists and naturalists, and they're depositing it in our collection with very good ecological data that's associated with it. It's very important that we can also unlock that knowledge.